Okay. So guys, welcome sa isa na namang impromptu charting session. Um, I found myself with some time today. So I figured I would do a few quick charts na usually tinatanong sa akin ng either by my students or from uh, some of the DMs that I get sa Investa. Um, madalas hindi ko nasasagot yung mga ganito kasi minsan talaga there's not much to say. Okay? But for today, we'll try to delve a little deeper to be more analytical ng konti, to be more objective and see if meron nga ba talaga mga interesting areas or levels that we can watch uh, for these uh, five stocks that we're gonna look at. Let's start with C, no? Okay, so C. Um, as we can see na, <laughs> hindi ko sa giant rhyme pa pala. Uh, kita naman natin na talagang downtrend na siya, no? Obvious na obvious naman. Uh, even if we zoom out, from here, di ba? Essentially, all we've been doing is going down. Dito nag-uptrend tayo sandali. But in the general flow of the bigger picture, downtrend talaga tayo. In fact, we can even draw a trend line uh, from here, di ba? To somewhere maybe there, like that. Somewhere like that. Talagang pababa pa tayo, no? Now, kapag mag-zoom in tayo ng konti, ano ang nakikita natin? First, I am sure, maraming nakapuna na we are almost at all-time lows. Yung all-time lows, ito yung mga, uh, yung price na nakuha natin nung unang lumaganap yung pandemic po dito sa atin. No? That was uh, March 2020. Ito yung talagang bumagsak yung index. Um, so, yun yung una natin kailangan pansinin. As price approaches this level, ibig bang sabihin, dapat ready na tayong bumili? Uh, for me, not necessarily, no? Kasi just because price are nearing, price is nearing all-time lows, that's not exactly a good thing. Diba? Pagka kunyari nag approach yung price sa all-time highs, madalas ang gusto natin is ma-breakoutan, eh, diba? Kasi tatry natin siya i-preempt, tatry natin pangunahan. Pero kapag ka nag approach sa all-time lows, iniisip natin, ah, mag-hold yan. So why is it na mas binibigyan natin ng halaga yung support kaysa na yung resistance. May mali, di ba? So, in this case, yes, we are approaching the lows, but, again, trade with caution, kasi, same as before, hindi na naman maganda yung market. Okay? Hindi nakakagulat na etong mga nangyayaring to pabalik dito, is sakto, naka-ECQ na naman tayo, no? Uh, na may Delta variant na naman, and kung ano-ano pang uh, mga balita na lumalabas tungkol sa uh, pandemic na saka sa lukuyang sumasalanta sa atin. No? So, what I would personally watch out for is kailangan uh, magkaroon muna ng bullish price action dito sa area na to. Something like that. Sa, something in the form of a short term reversal na kung mabuo man, kailangan ko rin makita na may maganda siyang area na pwedeng puntahan na maganda yung risk reward para sa akin. Kasi automatic yan, since ito yung lows mo, kahit saan ka pumasok dito, ang stop mo nandito eh. Kasi you're not gonna stop into this area of support eh. So you need to make sure na if you are considering trading this, if umaba man yung price, and if mabuo man yung bullish structure, you need to make sure na yung risk reward is worth it for you. Hindi natin alam ano yung magiging itsura nito by the time na bumaba man siya dito, kung umabot man tayo dun, no? maaaring hindi naman. Diba? So that's what you need to be watching out for. Okay? But for me, I wouldn't just randomly buy dito sa 1.9 and hope it holds. Um, I always feel na yung mga uh, quote-unquote gut feel buys, hindi siya smart eh. Uh, more often than not, masusunog ka lang eh. Yes, if it pays off, usually, kikita ka na medyo malaki kasi nga, uh, nag-hold yung support na bilhin mo sa pinakababa tapos tumulak bigla pa taas. That's true. Pero, pero on the flip side, kung mabasag yan, may hirapan ka rin na mag-cut eh. Diba? May hirapan ka rin i-manage yung risk mo ng mabuti. So, there's pros and cons to it. It's up to you. I'm just saying what I would do. And what, and what I would do is I would wait for some type of bullish price action to give me an indication na, okay, sige, baka worth it pumasok kung maganda na yung risk reward parameters niya. Okay? Uh, next, let's take a quick look at CLI. So, CLI... Uh, sorry. So, from the highs, no? Ang laki na rin na binaksak niya. Okay? Alam ko, um, 
kaya to tumulak din kasi yung may uh, stock divs, di ba? Kaso nga lang, hindi rin nag-sustain, tas bumaksak tayo. Okay, so, right now, we, uh, tawag ito? we broke down, tapos this area, this level, actually kinda held as support, no? Itong 2.79, 2.8 na area, uh, price consolidated around it, then we broke up, and now we're trying to regain yung 3 pesos. Now, one of the scenarios na uh, automatic na napupunta sa utak ko is maaari na we break above this, we come back here, retest this area, then push higher, and finally fill this gap. So, hindi na ang gulat na dito may gap, dito may gap, ang coincidental naman. Not really. Kasi kung titignan nyo, diba? number one, medyo iliquid yung CLI. Number two, nag-close to dito right before mag-fill nung gap. Now, a lot of traders would be thinking na, uy, baka mag-fill yung gap, tas mag-bounce. So, saan ako maghihintay? Saan ako mag -bid? Hindi ba dito? Dito sa area na to. And this candle closed at 3.26. This candle opened at 3.24. Bakit? Kasi malamang, marami ring traders, iniisip nila na, ah, okay, sige, parating ko pa ng konti, baka makuha ko ng mas mura. So, what do you think would happen if we did bounce from here, if we broke out, and from here, we lift off? Ang mangyayari, yung mga naipit sa area na to, odds are they're gonna try to get out. So, ako, personally, if I was gonna be trading CLI, and if it was able to break above 3, hold, and then try start pushing higher, I try to get out, even as early as mga 3.3, .3, up to a maximum of 3.4. Okay? Uh, however, that being said, yung mga property stocks na yun, hindi maganda ang reception ng market. Ali, VLL, lahat yan, um, medyo pabaksak, no? Medyo hindi maganda. So, there's no reason to think na CLI will be an exception other than the fact na baka laruin siya dahil nga mas illiquid compared sa mga Ali, compared sa mga SMPH, and so on. So, you just have to watch out for that fact. And odds are, if this does happen, medyo pabilisan yan. Okay? It's not a type of trade that I would personally take, but it is a type of trade I could see people taking. Kaya sinashare ko sila dito. Again, not just for my viewers, but also for my students, para lang maganda yung paliwanag ko and nasasagot ko yung mga tanong nilang lahat. Uh, next, let's take a quick look at IMI. Okay. So, IMI, ano ba yung huling nangyari? Uh, last we looked at it, it was up here. Uh, tinitingnan natin if uh, itong mga 9.5 area could have held, pero hindi, bumulusok lang talaga pababa. ba? Bumulusok lang pababa. Granted, hindi sobrang taas yung volume ng pagbaba, but still, bumulusok sa pababa. Now, what happened? We broke below tong level na to. Uh, this is 8.52, no? Uh, pakita ko lang. Uh, natakpang kasi siya ng price. Okay? 8.52. Uh, what happened? We broke down below it. Then, after we broke down below it, price tried to trade above it again, but it resisted and pushed back and price closed below it. Now, what we don't want to see kung bullish tayo sa IMI is for price to break down further around this level. So, sabihin na lang natin, banda dito, para maganda. Uh, sorry, nalimuta ko yung magnet. Okay. To break down below this level, if price closes below this level, odds are it's gonna push a lot lower, maybe back to 7, no? So break below 8, we might see 7 again. If we can push higher, if we can close above 8.5 with conviction, meaning with volume and with velocity, hindi lang basta 8.54, ganon. Kailangan mga 8.7, 8.8, ganyan. Talagang may volume, malakas. Then maybe we can use that momentum to see kung, okay, uh, kung nag-break nga to dito, uh, can we see a proper retest of maybe this zone around here? May bullish price action ba? Mag-hold ba? Maybe test buy ng konti. Then from there, see if we can target 9.85. Okay? Again, this is not financial advice. This is not trading advice. This is purely educational. And isa lang siya sa mga na-visualize ko na possible scenarios if that does happen. Okay? Uh, next, let's take a quick look at RRHI. So similar sa C, we are actually approaching all-time lows. No? So all-time low ng RRHI is 44. 
alam ko na sa 49 pesos pa lang tayo, it's still 5 pesos away. We might never reach there. But we are close to 48. Why is 48 important? Because 48, if you look back, is yung initial talaga ng support eh. 44, yes, kasi nag-panic selling tayo dito. Pero, nung pabaksa, saan tayo nag- nakaharap ng support? Hindi ba sa 48? We broke down, we immediately retook 48. Tapos, saan tayo nag-retest? Hindi ba 48 din? Retested 48, then pushed higher from there. Diba? So, ngayon, ito, broke down, almost touched 48. Nasa 48.5 tayo. Di tayo umabot, then push higher. But, ngayon, it's looking more and more likely na at least we retest 48. So, again, similar sa C. I wouldn't just jump in just because na, eh kasi nakita ko doon sa video, pinakita na significant level of support siya. Diba? Just because there's history, it doesn't mean na it's gonna hold. Okay? We still need to be careful. We still need to watch out. So, I want to see something similar doon sa nangyari dito. So, if it does break down, I want to see the level retaken. I want to see it retested and hold. Then see from there kung kaya niyan tumaas. Okay? At least back to this area. Okay? It's not an exciting trade. But, depending on how things shake out, it might be a trade na sulit itake kasi yung risk reward niya maayos. Percentage-wise, it's not the best. Pero risk reward niya baka medyo okay. Again, I say baka kasi depende lahat yan eh. How things shape out, how the setup forms, how the pattern forms before we can get in and actually take the trade. Okay? And then finally, uh, let's take a quick look at SPC. So SPC, um, we were trading at all-time highs around that area. So, wala na yan. No? Uh, dito na. We're, we're trading at the highs. Price tried to break down. It wouldn't let it. Nag-hold tayo above 11.3. Itong level na to, no? Ito yun. Galing yan dito. Nag-hold tayo above it. Nag-consolidate sandali. Pataas. You could say na nag-form to ng parang uh, ascending triangle. Diba? Then, we broke out from this candle. Then, nag-hold tayo so far above this. So, what you want to see from now, if you are bullish SPC, is kapag bumalik siya dito, hopefully, mag-hold tong area na to. If there's this area holds and, start, and price starts pushing higher, then we might see it na i-retest niya tong 13 area na all-time high. Obviously, if we can break that, then uh, wala na tayong data, no? wala na tayong uh, previous structure to lean on for support or resistance. I mean, sorry, for resistance kasi nga pataas na lang siya. So, uh, at that point, more of bantayan na lang watching price action and so on. But, yan yung current structure niya right now. Okay? Uh, again, medyo illiquid tong SPC. Napapansin ko marami sa mga pinapatingin sa akin medyo may pagka-illiquid ng konti, no? <laughs> medyo illiquid tong SPC. So, maaari na kung pumasok kayo, baka mahirapan kayong makalabas dahil nga medyo may pagka-illiquid siya ng konti. Baka lumalim ng konti yung stop nyo. So, if you are considering trading this, then you need to take into consideration na maaaring hindi kayo makalabas sa exact price na gusto nyong labasan. And you need to take that into calculation. Okay? So, those are the five stocks that we're gonna look at today. Uulitin ko lang. Okay? All of this is purely for educational purposes. None of it is trading advice. None of it is financial advice. None of it is investment advice. Okay? Sinagot ko lang po yung mga tanong na tinanong sa akin. Okay? Hindi po ibig sabihin nun, dahil nakita nyo sa drawing, trade na po natin kaagad. That said, I hope marami po kayo natutunan sa video na to. And if so, at feeling nyo nakatulong siya sa inyo, I would really appreciate it if you give this video a like and consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, good luck and happy trading.